There's also another new um, law that is that passed that has to do with like pharmacies and the you know the, the little medication labels that uh, are in English. I know that if those little labels are in English, it's very hard to understand. But the department, um, the pharmacy board, is now looking at how to make those labels more understandable and actually maybe even try to have them translated. So they're taking comments to that. And I'm going to be leaving some surveys with KRC so that you could, um, they could try to help you fill it out so that you can tell the pharmacy board that you want it in certain, you want the, the, the labels translated, you know, into your language. So those are some of the, the requirements that, um, are in, on the state level. Um, and so when you look, you know, what kind of rights you have, very often it's easiest to try to figure out who to go to to complain, depending on who is um, where you're going. So that if you're going to, like, a, um, a, a medical office, you know that they receive federal funds, and so you know that they have to comply with Title VI. Or if you um, uh, go to a state agency, like a state program, where they don't get federal funds, you know that you can use that government code I was telling you about to say that you have a right. Or if it's a private plan, you, you have that new requirement under SBA 53. So, so it's very important who is, who is in charge of that program to figure out when you want to try to um, file a complaint or, or, or go and try to get your service. And so um, the other thing is there's some different steps you can take when you're having problems. I think you're very, it's, you're very lucky because KRC is very responsive and you can go to them when you have a problem. There's also other um, uh, uh, agencies that can help you. There's the Health Consumer Center at the Neighborhood Legal Services who can also help you if you're having problems. And there's some representatives that you'll hear from in a moment uh, about that. Uh, and so, you know, you could try to, uh, I think when, when others were encouraging you to go to wherever you're having problems and try to file some complaint, that is very important to make sure that it's written down and so there's a record and you know, you know, if they start seeing that there's many complaints, then that will be a pattern and they will have to address that problem. Our office has helped different, um, um, patients and, and agencies file Complaints with Michael's office, the Office for Civil Rights, so that if there's, you know, a, a serious problem, we can try to address it on a larger level. And finally, there's just, I included some different telephone numbers that you can call if you're having problems. There's some numbers if you're, you know, there's, I put the OCR number on there. Also, if you're having problems with your managed care plan, there's a there's a HMO hotline that you can call when you're having complaints getting an interpreter. And and finally, I just wanted to let you know that there are efforts because um, to try to get funding to pay for interpreters and translation of services because one of the issues is that a lot of providers, a lot of doctors, office or hospitals say, oh, we can't provide these services because we can't pay for it. And so there's some of us that are working on a statewide level to try to get the de State Department of Healthcare Services to get some federal matching funds to pay for these services. And so there was a... Um, a task force that was created, uh, the Medical Language Access Services Task Force, that we came, we were meeting for the last couple of years, and we have a recommendation for the state, and we're talking to the state to try to get some money so that we can pay for these services so people won't have to pay it for it for themselves and will help the doctors and the hospitals and the other providers pay for these services. So I will be working with KRC to give you more information when we maybe need you to write um, the governor's office or maybe write uh, the legislators in, in Sacramento. Anyway, so I'm going to, that, that about ends my presentation and we're going to I'm looking forward to hearing about your questions, and then maybe we can try to come up with some solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Um, as I was hearing panelists' comments, I was really impressed by their knowledge 
and detailed explanation, as well as their commitment from different government and agencies that they're not just sitting there, not doing anything, but they try to work with the community and put their effort in it. So KRC, community health promoters, and everyone here really appreciate their effort. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention that hearing panelists' comments and remarks, that I guess the language access is uh, our right, and we, uh, it's protected by law, either uh, federal level, state level, or local level, that it's given to us. So I guess that was clear from the presentation. And also, I would like to make a quick um, question to Mr. Shinov that I am really well familiar with the uh, BMI project, and I was just wondering that uh, currently the project is funded through uh, grant money, and there, I, I wasn't sure about uh, secure funding, so I was just wondering whether that project will continue with the um, interpreters that you hired uh, as of now. We have to find a way to make that continue. So there the is answer no, is yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. That will be really great news because a lot of Korean. <laughs> um, let me let me just explain because the Department of Health Service provides this uh, BMI uh, program, which any. Korean patient can go to four county, four different county hospitals to get uh, interpreting services, and we really appreciate that. And also, I just wanted to um, thank uh, Mr. Uh, Browning for mentioning that uh, DPSS is trying really hard, which we already knew, and also it's going to be happening soon, and maybe end of this year. So we really appreciate uh, their effort. DPSS has been having meeting with KRC and uh, uh, our seniors for a year, and it's not just we're meeting at this town, but we've been built relationship, and we try hard work together to find out the problems. So I just wanted to uh, say thank you. And also um, for uh, Michael, Jerry, and Dorina providing us uh, thorough knowledge and uh, explanation on our legal rights. And um, so due to our time restriction, uh, we pre-collected questions from community members, and I'm going to be reading it to panel. If any of you can answer this question, uh, that would be great. So the question was, why the language service is not happening? Why interpreter service is not quick enough when I go to hospital. And I was just wondering if it's uh, protected by law. I would like one of you to explain why. So it's mainly why it's not happening. So I guess it's kind of like broad question. Anybody wants to answer? Well, I think it's, you know, money is part of it. The state budget cut many county departments, so we don't have as many staff as we did last year. Just to be honest, we have 800 fewer staff. That has some impact. That's not the total impact. I do think it's important for us to realize the value of translation for all of you, and I think this meeting has certainly helped, helped us to do that. We have about well, almost 4,000 staff in DPSS who are bilingual for the various programs, but we only have 38 in the Korean language, so that is a challenge for us. Oh, thank you for your answer. And I would like to just acknowledge the fact that we have members of, uh, members from Cambodian community and Filipino community. So I just wanted to let you know that, uh, not only Korean and other community members are here present. So if you want to, you know, address that, that would be great too. Um, so, again, uh, you we have time here? restrictions oh. and we have a lot of great community-based organization representatives here today. So we would like to hear a couple of comments from them. Um, 
I would like uh, for Eli from Neighborhood Legal Service Center. Would you like to give us a comment? Good morning, everybody. I'm, a I'm at Neighborhood Legal Services. I'm a staff attorney, and we've, we've been working very hard to try to assist uh, you guys and anybody else who has uh, needs for language access to get that language access. And many times we've had to file some complaints because we haven't uh, received uh, the appropriate response and the people that we're helping out. And one of the things that we've noticed is that when we've filed complaints and there's an investigation, many times the, the results of the investigation are that, you know, it was bad service and it, it wasn't discrimination. And we're having a problem because it almost seems like discrimination is very narrowly defined. It's almost like it has to be intentional for it to be discrimination. And so one of the questions that we have is, what's the difference between discrimination and bad service? And at what point does bad service become discrimination? So those are the challenges that we face. I don't know if there's anybody here who can help us with that. And it's, it's a challenge. Uh, we understand the challenge. And we appreciate that you're working hard on it. And I thank you for allowing me to make a comment. Anybody would like to respond to uh, Eli's comment? I would. Oh, okay. um, I'm Nick Ippolito. I'm the Social Services Deputy for Supervisor Kanabi. Um, Neighborhood Legal Services has been an ongoing partner with the county on many different issues involving advocacy for our CalWORKs recipients or GR recipients and folks who are on Medi-Cal as well. Um, you know, I, I defer to uh, Mr. Browning for more information, but um, I think that we, I think that DPSS and, and the county in general makes a um, um, uh, extended effort to work with advocates to look at not only particular issues as it pertains to um, specific clients and specific situations, but also those specific situations if they're indicative of a larger systemic issue. And I, and I know, Bob, you meet fairly regularly, I think, with, with advocates on, on the issue of, of civil rights and language access. I know as far as my boss is concerned, and I think of everybody at this table, um, uh, customer service and um, making sure that people have reasonable access to the services that they're entitled to and the information they're entitled to is is priority number one. And um, I think we just, you know, we just continue to work on those issues and, 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 just, and just continue to um, uh, try to identify resolutions for them. So I hope that makes sense. I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything from the county's perspective. Well, one thing that would be helpful before this meeting is over or maybe after that is to have some specific situations a specific name, a case number, and what didn't go right. I have the one uh, set of forms here, which would certainly be helpful. I know you want those back. But if we could have some very specific things that we could go back and see if our automated system is doing something that we're not aware of. Maybe it's not doing what we think it is. We, not, we know it's not doing everything we would like it to do, but there may be some, some information that you have that you can give us so that we can go back and identify specifically in your situation what went wrong. That's the only way we'll fix this system. And Michelle is here. You want to stand up again, Michelle? Michelle is bilingual, and I think she can certainly get information from some of you about the specific problem, the specific form, the date, and actually what what happened. So if, if, if you just want to say that again so that everyone will uh, understand that, Michelle. Uh, 저희가 그 translated 하는 form들이 그 리더 시스템 안에 들어가서 그것을 그 Korean speaking worker가 uh, Korean speaking 하는 language로 assign이 되면은요 그것이 이제 Korean form으로 클릭이 돼서 리더 시스템에서 그게 나오게 돼 있어요. 그래서 그런데 지금 problem은 아직 그 많은 language들이 그 안에 다 들어가 있지 않기 때문에 그런 스텝들이 필요해서 
그런 것 같아요. 근데 저희들이 지금 말씀하신, 미스터 브라우닝께서 말씀하신 것은 그런 랭귀지들이 우리 리더 시스템 안에서 클릭을 했을 때그 폼들이 자동적으로 다 나오게 되어 있는데요. 그래서 그런 시스템의 문제가 조금씩 걸리는 것 뿐인 거예요. 그래서 아직 저희들이 어, 준비한 것을 다 어, 리더 안에 다 넣지를 못했고요. 그런 것들이 어, 조금 기다려야 되는 문제들이 있는 것 같아요. 
Hold, please hold. And then they wait, wait, wait. Sometimes this gets disconnected. And then we call again. And then call back in 30 minutes. And then we get automated message. And then after that, we get the message saying that these workers' working hours are Tuesday between 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Those are only hours that that specific worker that we contacted claims in her voicemail that those are only hours that she receives phone calls. That, that's where we need specifics. We need to know who was called, what office, if, it, if you're talking about a DPSS office, and who you were trying to get in touch with. You know, only if we know specifics can we really take the most appropriate action. Um, yes, that is correct. But at the same time, I see frustration from community members' part that they have to complain over and over again. That's why we're having this town hall to have great panelists to listen to communities and come together to uh, resolve this problem. So we understand that we have to bring specific cases to people who can uh, change this, but at the same time, we would really appreciate if you move forward a little bit quicker to uh, help community members to get the service that they deserve. But again, this cannot happen without collaboration among community-based organizations, community members, and um, all these governmental agencies who are trying really hard. So um, with that note, uh, I would like to hear from uh, Anita from Parts for Health, another comment from community-based organization working on language access issue. Good morning. My name is Anita Homhale. I'm a program director of Pals for Health. We are a full spectrum language service provider for LEP patients. And oftentimes, we are the last resort for patients who are not able to communicate in English language and who have been denied of their rights to free interpretation services. And I understand a lot of time when we come out to talk to um, elected officials or to um, hospital administrators, we often hear, you know, oh, I didn't know that this is a problem. I didn't know the extent of the problem. So in that in that effort, we have collected stories from actual patients who have been denied of um, their right to language assistance. And I would like to highlight one story in particular, and I have left this um, on, on your um, table for you. The story is from Ms. Edna Gutierrez. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. When she went in for the biopsy, she had asked for uh, a Spanish interpreter and a Spanish interpreter was not provided for her. When the doctors were prepping to do the biopsy, they were prepping the wrong breast. Using hand gesture, she was trying to communicate to the doctors that they were operating on the wrong breast, but they ignored her. So the biopsy results came back as negative, and she was sent home. After that, she received notices, follow-up notices in English, which she could not understand. And even if she could understand, she wasn't going to go back to the same hospital knowing that she got inadequate care in the first place. Four years later, when she couldn't stand the pain anymore, she had to go back to the hospital. At that time, she was she had to use her 15-year-old daughter as an interpreter. When the daughter learned that her breast cancer had advanced to stage four and she was to have her breast removed, the daughter was not able to communicate that to her because of the emotional impact. The daughter ended up having to miss school and she would cry all the time and she kept on trying to convince her mother that everything was okay. On the day that Ms. Gutierrez had to come in for consultation for the surgery, she was once again denied her right to um, language assistance. She had to call her brother who was on the road working as a truck driver to interpret for her. When her brother learned that the chance of survival of the surgery was 30%, her brother was traumatized by the effects. He ended up having to lose work to recover himself from, from having to deliver the bad news to her, um, her sister. In Ms. Guterres' own word, she said, it is very sad when you're unable to communicate due to language constraints. Many mistakes occur, maybe even the loss of lives. 
And by chance, she was able to find a staff member of Pals for Health, and she was able to access our services. And even yesterday, I was at UCLA speaking on language access, and a staff member from Chinese Progressive Action came up to me and said, we have so much problem with LAC USC. We try to address the issue in terms of providing interpretation services for Chinese immigrants, especially low-wage earners, and we've gotten nowhere. What can we do about that? So we are working together, and, and I've been very um, comforted by Mia's presence and, and willingness to work with us to address that issue as well. And I'm also very um, – I would like to commend – um, Dr. Shunoff's office on the improvement made at Rancho. We understand the effectiveness of VMI. The technology works, but the cost to the county at this point is quite prohibitive. And we are hoping to be able to work with the county in coming up with using the same technology but at a more cost-effective um, way to address the language needs. And finally, we were greatly touched by um, Supervisor Don Cannabis' office in contacting us last summer in trying to work out a program where we could actually develop using the resources of the community to train community members to become healthcare interpreters so that, A, um, in this recession, in this climate of unemployment, they would have a, a gainful way of earning a living while providing a much needed services to the county, acting as trained healthcare interpreters, also um, to supplement the, the language uh, assistance that's currently being uh, offered by LA County Hospital. And I would like to mention also the Korean interpreter at Rancho Teresa used to be um, a PALS language consultant as well. So we understand, we could proudly say the effectiveness of our um, training program. Um, the question that I have, since I have everyone here, is how committed are you to addressing this issue? And if you are committed, are you willing to send representatives who have power to actually make the changes that need to meet with us, the consumers, the community-based organizations on a quarterly basis? Because this is a great problem that everyone here has experienced. In, in great extent. And it, it's disheartening for us to have the power that be to say, we don't know this is a problem. We want you to know that this is a problem, and we want you to know that we are here not to blame, but to work with you to address the issue. So that's my question. Thank you very much. Um. Um. Anybody from panelists would like to answer her suggestion? Well, just let me say we're willing to meet with and work with any anyone. And certainly part of the reason for being here today is to hear and listen well, uh, how things are and how, how, you know, how far we have to go yet. And I think DPSS is certainly willing to come to the table to try to resolve the issues, just, uh, just like uh, Dr. Chernoff said. Definitely, this is the first step of that, and not only to include our social services programs, but also the rest of array of county programs, um, as you know. So one is the social services, but we do provide a whole array of municipal services to the county, and also there are language access issues, not only in this population, but across the board. How do you say absolutely in Korean? Taeyeon. Taeyeon. Thank you so much for everyone committing to the meeting that we might be calling you soon. So uh, get everyone ready to send someone from your office. And we'll get ready as community-based organization and community members. Um, so now, thank you all for your great comments and questions. And we hope to continue this great work among us and collaborate to make these things uh, change and get better in our community. Now, Yang Hee Park from K K Korean Research Center We'll close today's event with, um, before closing, she's going to announce some uh, instruction. Okay. 
안녕하세요. 저는 민족학교에서 의료, 교육, 봉사를 하고 있는 박양희입니다. 앞서 여러 연장자분들이 언어의 고통을 말씀하셨듯이 저는 봉사를 통해 연장자분들의 어려움을 직접 지켜보고 있습니다. 저희 민족학교에서는 가주보건 리더 모임과 함께 3년 여의 언어 권리 캠페인을 활동하였으며 현재 모든 메디칼 서류가 번역이 다 되어 있다는 소식을 들었습니다. 예, 감사합니다. 어, 그러나 아직도 컴퓨터 시스템이 제대로 실행이 안 되는 문제와 언어 지정 양식서인 PA481을 작성하여도 언어 서비스를 못 받는 분들이 계십니다. 어, 이, 어, 이틀 전인 한 분이 민족학교로 방문을 하셨었습니다. 공공사회 복지부 사무실에 찾아가 통역 서비스를 요청하였으나 거절되어 메디카를 결국 신청을 못하시고 돌아오셨습니다. 언어 서비스가 안 되어 받는 고통은 한인 연장자뿐만 아니라 전체 LA 카운티 이민자 연장자들에게 해당되, 해당다는 문제라고 봅니다. 오늘 언어 권리 로스앤젤레스 타운홀 자리에서 문제점을 지적해 주셨고 또그 해결점에 대해 논의가 될수 있는 자리가 되어 좋았습니다. 이러한 의견들이 이 자리에서 끝나는 것이 아니라 지속적으로 함께 노력하여 결실을 맺어서 영어가 불편하신 모든 분들에게 더 이상 불이익이 없도록 되었으면 좋겠습니다. 어, 그런 의미에서 오늘 이 자리는 일회성 행사가 아니라 어, 첫걸음이라고 생각됩니다. 오늘 가까이에서 커뮤니티와 의견을 교환하기 위해 참석해 주신 정부기관 관계자분들께 다시 한번 감사드립니다. 어, 순서 내내 커뮤니티 의견을 경청하고 해결 의지를 보여주셔서 기쁘게 생각합니다. 오늘 보여주신 관심과 의지로 앞으로도 한인 커뮤니티뿐 아니라 로스앤젤레스 내 소수민족 커뮤니티와 협력하여 질 높은 서비스를 위한 시스템을 구축할 때까지 함께 노력해 주시길 다시 한번 부탁드립니다. 이런 자리를 마련할 수 있도록 참여해 주신 여러분들께도 다시 한번 감사드리며 언어 권리 로스앤젤레스 타운홀을 마치겠습니다. 어... 어, 그리고 저희가 나가실 때 통역기를 반납을 해 주시고요. 그리고 신분증을 꼭 찾아가 주시고요. 저희가 간편하게 점심을 대신해서 샌드위치를 밖에 준비를 했습니다. 지금 한꺼번에 다 일어나지 마시고요. 지금 나가시려면 복잡하시니까요. 저희가 순서대로 줄을 서서 저희 안내 아, 안내원에 저희 직원들 자원봉사자분들이 안내를 할 것입니다. 예, 그러면 조심해서 돌아가십시오. 감사합니다. 네. So we're gonna have speakers and organization representatives exit first.